Hey, it's Moms vs. Aunts, your weekly happy hour where we chop it up about trends, gossip, solo mom life, and how to level up in this crazy world. Hey, 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 it's episode eight. Can you believe it, Kiki? I can. Eight is my lucky number, so I feel good about this one. I know. Like, um, So last week, seven was my lucky number. It's Eight this week is your lucky number. Um, the funniest thing was how excited I was to outro the show last week. Like, it's going to be our season finale. And then we got on the phone with um, <laughs> with our production company. And they're like, it's not it's not really a season finale. It's just, we're just renewing your contract. And I was like, oh, so <laughs> uh, it's really not our season finale, guys. But like, shout out to us for getting our contract renewed. Woohoo! <laughs> That means that you guys are listening and you like it and they want us to do more. So there really isn't going to be a real break in in episodes. Um, But maybe because I'm an asshole, I'll just spend the whole rest of the episode calling it the season finale. (laughs) You know, it's always the highest rated show, which is maybe we we were just uh, trying to manifest more viewership. Like, hey, guys, last last time to hear us. I was feeling myself, too, because I spent like the better part of like last week crying and being like all in my good feelings like I was watching all of the insecure Instagram pages because they just did their series finale and it was just like I don't know I felt so amazing it was just such a good feeling like every single I follow all of the actors plus Issa Rae so it's like my whole timeline was flooded and I was like man I was so proud of them and like happy for them maybe because they were having their series finale I was like it's our season finale but anyways, right. <laughs> so anyways, I'm an asshole, but um, thank you so much for joining us. We've got our happy hour this week and we're going to be talking. Well, Kiki, what are we, what's our main topic this week? Well, you know, I think, you know, Nick Cannon has been sort of all over the news Girl. because he just, it, you know, came out that he's having his seventh child um, and his fourth within the last, in less than a year. Um, he has two sets of twins. What two, in the that's world? Not, that's four children. That's Mm-mm. two sets of twins. Um, and yeah, so it, we, you know, we wanted to talk about the idea of quote unquote non-traditional relationships, non-traditional marriages. And, you know, whether that traditional, you know, what people consider traditional is even still like a goal or reality anymore. Right. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know. It feels like it. we've gone so so far in a different direction in the last like 50, 100 years. So yeah. Okay. So we'll talk about that. Uh, Make sure you stick around for the hustle, ways to make a little bit of cash. And then Kiki always does this right at the end with the cool down. So yeah, stick around to the end of the show. Um, All right. So let's see. Up first is going to be our happy hour cocktail. I thought long and hard about this because it's the season finale. (laughs) So um, I wanted it to be something really delicious and I love this drink again summertime the watermelon Moscow mule right Ooh, I so don't the, think I've had a watermelon Moscow mule. right in some circles I I look this up some people call it a Montauk mule but I don't know why I guess I don't know whatever I can um, see that Montauk is like the last little city all the way at the end of Long Island in in like the Hamptons where like the young um uh the young I, I don't even know what you, how you would describe those kids that hang out in in Montauk but um fake but anyways, socialites. Thank you. All right. I was trying to find something that wasn't going to get me in trouble but that sounds great. It's perfect. Thank you. Um, but anyway, so it's, you know, it's a Moscow mule, but make it watermelon. So, all right, I'm going to give you guys the quick rundown. This is to make a batch of four. So if you wanted to make like a like a small carafe because um, you're hanging out with a friend. Also, I would just make a small carafe because I could drink four. All right, because this makes <laughs> this makes four. So you're gonna start with. Um, you can put the little measure away this week because we're not doing things in little ounces. You're gonna pull out the actual measuring cup. So you're gonna measure three quarters of a cup of vodka, one and a half cups of watermelon juice. And so here's the thing: you can buy watermelon juice like at the store sometimes. 
Or you could just make your own by putting some watermelon in a blender, blending it, and then straining it through like a sieve so you get all the little chunky parts out. Either way, you're gonna need a cup and a half of that. And the juice of two limes and ginger beer. So for um, four drinks, you need one 12 ounce bottle of ginger beer. I would say that my favorite ginger beer is Reed's, which is Jamaican, which is really good. And oh, they, I like that one. It's so good. And they have like varying levels of spiciness. <laughs> so if you like things really gingery, you can get like the extra spicy, which I love. Um, but if you, if you know, Fever Tree works fine. Gosling's now has one. Um, but Reed's is definitely my favorite um, ginger beer. And then you're going to need like extra lime for garnish and some mint. So you're gonna mix all of that together and you're just gonna pour it in a in glasses with filled with ice. I mean it's super easy. Wow, that's it's super simple. easy. Yeah. So um yeah, watermelon. It's like it's it's so summery, it's very refreshing. And I don't know how like watermelon did get associated with Montauk, but I really do love that that watermelon ale, that Montauk beer that, that oh, they do. Yeah. It is a good beer. So somehow, but so it makes sense that it's called a Montauk mule. And so, you know, but you know, I'm never happy. If if you if you like typecast me as liking watermelon because I'm black, then I'm gonna call you racist. And then if you say watermelon is from Montauk, I'm I'm mad about that too. So who who knows? <laughs> you can't please you can't please me. <laughs> Um, but whatever, it is delicious. I love watermelon, just about everything. So this is great and a little twist on the Moscow Mule, which, you know, is also delicious on its own. That's that's the same drink, but without the watermelon juice. Um, yeah, all right. <laughs> Why are you and making super, that face? <laughs> no, it was, and it was super refreshing because I remember like, when I was like trying to figure out like what are the most hydrating things if you don't drink water, like you know, there's people who like don't drink water, so it's like how do you get them to drink water? And watermelon, I mean, mm -hmm. hence its name, is like I don't know, ninety percent. It's like so full of water that it's like if you just you know. So I feel like in cocktail version, at least if you're drinking a watermelon drink, mm -hmm. you're also getting your essential hydration. I was obsessed with watermelon both in my pregnancies, like during the summer months. Like I just could not get enough of it. It was just like cold and crunchy and refreshing. Mm. I just, I and I couldn't drink for obvious reasons. Um, so I probably consumed like way too much, but I love it. Um, so yeah, we got to jump back into Nick Cannon though, because this shit is blowing my mind. Like, I don't understand what happened like after him and Mariah Carey got <laughs> divorced. And it's like, I just became aware of this headline only like two days ago. I don't know if I've been under a rock, but like, I was just like, it. I, what I guess I'm trying to be, a little, are all of these women okay with him? Like having kids, like some, it's overlapping. I'm confused. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there is definitely overlap. And, you know, it's just kind of, I mean, you can't be using protection if you are having these children. Right. So for there to be overlap with these women, I just feel like, wouldn't they feel some type of way just about that? Like, forget the pregnancies. Let's just talk about the fact that, like, you're over here unprotected with this woman and with me too. That's already a problem. Yeah, I guess because I wasn't really understanding. I'm looking. I know, you know, the math is simple. I know the gestational period of a human baby. And I'm seeing like that he's got these like maternity photos with all of the different women where he's like also strangely wearing a turban in every single one with like different color turban. Why, Nick? I that's don't his, know. That's his look now. Yeah, that's his look. And yeah, and he's like, so he's like, all the pictures, he's got his hands like around them, holding their belly, you know, whatever. Sometimes he's kind of facing to the back. But like, this is all happening within the last, you know, less than 12 months, less than 10 months. And everybody looks so like pleased with themselves in all of these professional photos that it made me wonder if they were in some sort of like polyamorous or like, what is going on here? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what, yeah, their relationship status is. But for sure, I mean, I didn't I didn't know any of these women. I mean, other than Mariah, I don't know any of the other women that Nick has been with. I know that Nick has syndicated television shows that I know that he must be making plenty of money off of. So I will just say that they probably are pleased with themselves for mm -hmm. having a baby with Nick Cannon because 
I think that they're pretty well off right now, mm-hmm. or at least will be. Um, I, I did also love the joke you mentioned the maternity photos, how everyone was like, but Nick is going to show up for that maternity photo. He <laughs> is always at the maternity photo, like just, you know, so, you know, he is a present maternity photo father. <laughs> but um, like, I, I think I even heard a quote that he wants to have like more kids. Yeah, he said he he actually said that he wasn't really interested in being in like, I think it said a committed on a podcast, something about he doesn't want to be in a committed or another marriage, but he wants to have more kids. So I don't think that this is like the last of it. Like, I think he's going to get into double digits. I'm putting my money on it. I also just I don't know. I, I wonder how present of a father you can be. I mean, I know he has money, but I wonder how present you can be when you have like that many kids. It just seems like there's there's only but so much time in the day. You're a busy guy. Like, how can you be there for all of those kids? I agree. There's no way. I mean, look, I haven't seen I don't know what him and Mariah's status is, but I definitely haven't seen them really like co-mingling that much since they've broken up. So it's like, I don't know how often, I mean, I'm sure he gets visitation, but it's like, I don't even know how often it is. And yeah, like when you're spreading your time between, I don't even have seven friends because I can't even imagine how I would spread my time between seven friends, let alone kids that need stuff from me. Like my friends don't need, my friends just need me to show up, have a drink with them, chop it up, whatever. We talk, <laughs> gossip, talk shit. Yeah, that's how it. You gonna, how you exactly, exactly? They don't need money from me. They don't need diapers from me. They don't need food from me. I mean, you know, all I of, need food from you because you're a very, things. you're a very good chef. So I do consider that I knew I need food from you. But <laughs> well, I was talking to some uh, to some of my friends uh, at dinner the other night, uh, and they were saying that because this is like me being obsessed about Nick. So we were talking about Nick, and then one friend was saying that Mariah Carey's book on Audible is like everything because apparently she narrates it. So, you know, like there's times you should read the book and times you should like listen to the book. Well, she narrates it and she like sings throughout it and just listening to her in her own voice. But I was just like, did she say anything about Nick? Because I was just still zoned in on what's going on right now. And they said she didn't, I mean, she really didn't say much about him. She obviously didn't disparage him or whatever. So again, I'm still not 100% sure like how good of a dad this guy is to be having a bajillion kids but it also just brings up the question of like you know do we even care about like the nuclear family anymore like is that even like a thing you see young people sometimes who are still holding on to this idea of like i want to get married in the white dress and the wedding and all of that but then like i'm at an age now where no lie all but like two of all those weddings i went to 10 years ago have all ended like, yeah. like everybody's getting divorced. I thought the rate was supposed to be 50%. Well, in my age group, it's in my friend group, it's like 90%. So yeah. I don't really know, you know, what that means. Obviously, I, I have never been married. Um, and that's another thing, too. Like, I was... I mean, I was like, let's 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 make a baby. You want to get married? No, yeah. no, 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 no. Let's make a baby. Like, no, let's go do that. I, I didn't even care you know i was ready to skip over that and like i wanted my little baby and i got my little baby so um i mean who are we who are we anymore (laughs) yeah that's the thing because like you know in a like you know traditional marriage it's like get married have the baby um i'm not saying i'm opposed to marriage i will say that at this point in my life and most parts of my life i just kids just felt like not I, it wasn't for me. I love kids. I love ev- other people's kids. I love hanging out with kids. I love talking to kids. They're a lot of fun. I don't like being responsible for kids. And so if I got married, I probably wouldn't have kids. So that would be considered not, you know, I'm sure I'd have a lot of people being like, when are you going to have kids? You know, like mm-hmm. doing that thing. But it's like, n- never. So that's also non-traditional. But, you know, I think, I think for them, I would, I would venture, you know, we keep hearing that statistic about like 50% of marriages in divorce. I'm almost to the point where I think that, that that survey hasn't been done since 1984 because I, there's no way that has not gone up because it just seems like more people are like doing their, their own thing. And, you know, like, the okay, the flip side of it, too, though, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone's doing their own thing. And that's why I think Modern Family, that show that came out with, you know, um, Sophia Vergara and Ed O'Neill. I love that show. Mm-hmm. But also, 
I don't know any modern families that are like that either, right? Like, yes, there's a lot of families that are not together, but let me tell you, I don't know any of them that are having great relationships with their exes and having all of the, like, none of that's happening, right? No, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. No, the, the, it, that was just like, I mean, it's a cute show and it's really funny, but it was like yeah. super flowery. And I found myself the most, you know, I get more excited when, you know, something like, like when, you know, gay marriage was like, allowed that like made me cry and you saw all these people getting married and you're like you know love wins and like I feel like more excited when I see like a couple who's maybe like beat the odds or some some crazy story like that but just regular old run of the mill getting married and having kids just doesn't seem like anybody's really like doing that anymore or if they are it's ending you know within a few short years it just doesn't feel like that's who we are as a country I don't know what's interesting too is that Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell have been goals for the longest time I mean I feel like multiple generations of people look at them and they're like That's goals. I think at one point, Susan Sarandon and uh, was it Tim Robbins were also considered part of that. But, you know, they uh, eventually split. But, you know, Goldie and Russ Kurt were just like, we don't need to get married and we are good with it. And it's kind of like exactly like they have their family, they have their kids, they mix, you know, they mix up the kid. You know, it's like it's all good. And to me that's like ideal. And that would be considered not traditional, but they seem like the most (laughs) wholesome traditional family, right? Yeah, that was, and I like that too. But again, we touched on this, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, where like, you know, whenever you end up in a situation where there's a guy who has, you know, really become like a great father for his stepkids, like it's always just applauded and lauded. You, you, How many times have you seen like a video on social of like a kid asking his stepdad to adopt him or something? And then like it's always a tearjerker video. Meanwhile, like we out here being stepmoms like left and right. It's yeah. fine. It's just like expected. <laughs> like, yeah. like, it's fine. Like we get with a guy, he's got kids, duh. But you know, when you see a guy who's doing that, it's always like this really great, wonderful tearjerker story. Like they weren't even his kids <laughs> and then he, he loved them like they were. Like motherfucker, we've been doing that forever. Like forever. My grandmother raised like three of my grandfather's kids that he had with other women. That's just... You know, that's not, anyhow, I could go on and on. But like, I don't know. I just kind of feel like marriage and, you know, what we have traditionally um, looked at as like the ideal, you know, when we were growing up and like generations before us just seems so far away now. I think kids are like younger generation are not like excited about getting married. I know that statistically, um, People are having less children. Birth rates are down. You know, there's a lot of different stuff going on. And then you have different kinds of relationships. I mean, what do you think about, um, you know, like throuples and like, you know, polyamorous kind of stuff? Like people are just kind of choosing to have like whatever works for them. I mean, I don't know. Do you think like that's going to be more of the air quotes norm going forward? No, you know, actually what I think is the norm now is what we've been talking about. It's these, you know, people who are in long-term relationships and not married, people who, you know, got someone who had a kid and became the stepmom, you know, people, you know, I think that is the norm now. And now sort of going way beyond that are this, you know, these polyamorous relationships. Because I think a lot of people still have troubles you know, really grasping it, which is why they make such great reality TV, right? Like Mm -hmm. I just, I just binged watch, uh, there's a show called Seeking Sister Wives. Like I think Mm -hmm. people were really familiar with Sister Wives, which was the original reality show that focused on this family and his multiple wives. Well, Seeking Sister Wives 
is all about the process to bring these women in from different couples. Mm. So like there's three seasons. I have never seen it. So I started on season three because I was like, I want to be up to date with the most current, right? Mm -hmm. And it is wild. I would (laughs) highly recommend watching this show. But what is like also very interesting is that every single couple is a man who is bringing on wives. And yet the wife is not... Not only is she not allowed to have any relationship, I mean, she has a relationship, but not a sexual relationship with the other wives. She's not allowed to have a sexual relationship with any other men. So it's really there to just serve him. And that I'm like, well, we need to like, I want to explore, you know, like women, does that exist? You know, like. I, I, you know, I, I watched Shaws of Sunset and one of the you know, characters, Gigi, she, you know, sort of came out. So she's exploring polyamory. So, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see where that journey takes her. Cause you don't ever see where it's a yeah, woman. You don't. With multiple guys. You don't. I mean, I don't know. Like, I wish I had like a little bit more intel on like, just, you know, I know obviously we live in a very patriarchal kind of like world, but also, you know, is it true that like men are just biologically like meant to sow their seed and like women tend to not want to be as promiscuous? I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's plenty of promiscuous women, obviously, but like, um, which I don't even like that word. Cause yeah, it has such a negative connotation, <laughs> like, right? Like, I mean, these guys are out here living their life. There's fine for girls to be out here living their life. Like you see how like even just right then and there, it's like there's this negative connotation if a woman sleeps around versus if a man sleeps around. So I'm not surprised that there's a whole show dedicated to this one guy looking for more women to have on his team. Meanwhile, the girls aren't allowed to go do anything else. That's that's like bizarro to me. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. But for a while, I, I don't know that things are going to change as far as like when you see things that feel outside of the norm, it's like a scandal or, you know, if, if a guy goes and has an affair with, you know, a famous person has an affair, it's always like a big thing. But meanwhile, like the reality is like this is what's happening all the time. Like this happens all the time. When we Absolutely. see when we see it on our politicians and celebrities, we're like, oh, how could? But like, just this is what's happening all the time. Yeah, I just saw what what was the name? Is, her, is it Katie? Katie Hill? I think her name was Katie. She was part of the Thruple and she was running for like I don't know city council or mayor. Oh somewhere. yeah, I saw she was gonna try to rerun. I guess because she's probably like whatever. You guys tried to like cancel me because of like my relationship status. Meanwhile, we're over here like we have commercial ads between a dude on, you know, Discovery Plus trying to, <laughs> you know, get with multiple wives. And you, I can't have a, a polit- political career. Yeah. And she was actually like probably in a healthy relationship, you know. But I mean, it wasn't like she was, oh, boy, da- uh, the, the guy who was running for governor of Florida who was found at the Mondrian with like drugs all around. Well, yeah, like, that was more with like a male yeah, I think that was more prostitution. Yeah, right. that's a different. <laughs> and then, and then him and his wife like went on Tamron Hall's show and had a whole interview, and she was like, "No, we're gonna stay married. Everything's fine." And I'm, you know, I'm considering maybe getting back into politics. Really, sir? Oh, okay, sure. Why not? So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, if you're but, if you're willing to lie to your wife, what are you willing to do to the to the public? I don't know about that, sir. The air the arrogance <laughs> though that he's just like I still I still have a career. What are you talking about? Sure, yeah. Why not? Um, all right, I haven't actually listened to this yet, so we're gonna listen to this at the same time. Um, but yeah, we asked you guys about relationships and non traditional versus traditional, and here is what you had to say. Hey mom, this is Anne. I'm here to answer your question about having a non-traditional relationship. Um, I've always known that I didn't want to get married. I just never really saw that in the cards for myself. Um, I just personally, the idea of, um, you know, remaining with one person throughout a large portion of one's life um, is terrifying to me. 
nothing against those who choose that. I just, um, you know, don't think it's for me. My partner actually does want to get married and have babies, um, but we recognize that that won't happen together. So <laughs> I guess it is a bit non-traditional that we're in a relationship um, that we know will eventually end because we want very different things in life. Uh, but for now, it's fun to just have fun and date and do whatever we're doing now, um, just with the understanding that, you know, we want different things, and at some point we'll have to, to grow apart, but it's cool to enjoy it while it's here. So um, for those who are, like, single and looking for people, I would say as long as you find the right person, like, it doesn't, you know, I guess depending on where you are in life, you don't necessarily have to have the same end goal to have a meaningful relationship for at least a little while. So Thanks, you all. Love the podcast. Take care. Mm, that was interesting. I really liked her approach, actually. So she's she seems to be like um, of the mindset that like like it's not forever, which I totally understand that. Like you can be in a relationship and you can have a really good run. But, you know, it doesn't have to be 50 years. And um, and you can look back fondly on, like, the good times that you had during a 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 15-year relationship and also, like, be able to know that maybe that person doesn't meet your needs and your goals anymore. And then you go. Everybody grows. So she's saying that, like, she knows her partner wants kids. She doesn't want kids. So there isn't there is like an unsaid expiration date on this but it sounds like they're going to keep riding it out until they reach that point cuz they they like each other they like to be together now and it's not like that her partner wants a child today so interesting i like that yeah i, <clears throat> I mean i don't know why yeah we put so much emphasis on like keeping relationships you know these sorts of relationships as like this long-term thing when we, we spent our whole lives knowing that people have come in and out because we've grown, they've grown, we've grown apart, like, you know, different things. And, and we understand that, but for some reason when it's, we're in love mm -hmm. in that way, it's, we can't understand it. We can't wrap our brains around that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, there's a growing apart. It, it's harder. I which think makes it, sense. I mean, I think it's a ro it's romantic or something to think about like the concept of forever, <laughs> but it is kind of unrealistic. So, um, all right. Uh, okay, we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll be back with um, The Hustle. Vanessa, you're going to have to tell me how to make some more money because I got a flat tire today and had an unexpected $100 <laughs> bill just out of nowhere. And I just feel like that's not OK. So tell me how I can make that $100 up. Um, OK, well, so since it's the season finale. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the not really season finale. Yes. Oh God. Um, I thought it would be great to talk about not not like not particularly like a hustle, but just like what like industries, what jobs are going to be like the next hot job? You know, there's a lot of folks who figured after the last year that maybe they want to pivot. Maybe they want to just like go do something else. I think a lot of people had some of those like, you know, just come to Jesus moments with themselves and maybe their industry kind of fell apart. They were out of work. They might have been collecting unemployment, but they didn't even really like their job to begin with. So it's like, what should I do? If you're looking to pivot, what's going to be the next new hot shit? So first I'm going to tell you what's going to not be the hot shit. <laughs> I saw an article article and it named like the top five jobs that are pretty much probably going to go away within the next like eight years. So like by by 2030, they don't see these jobs really existing anymore. Um, and I'll go backwards. So uh, number five is bank tellers. Everything's like pretty automated. Who really goes into a branch anymore? Nobody. Um, you'll still need like, you know, financial advisors and things like that. But like the bank teller, 
I mean, that's just rare. Like you won't they, really need very many bank tellers anymore. They don't even, um, I've saw, I've seen multiple TikToks going around. They don't even keep cash at the bank anymore, or they don't let you deposit cash at the bank. Like there was like, you know, uh, I think two or three TikToks I saw of people going to the bank to deposit cash and they were like, we do not accept cash deposits. No. And they that were like, well, what, so what are crazy. you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, why? Well, what is your purpose? And also, what's this bulletproof glass for, ma'am? <laughs> okay, it's just you sitting in a chair then. Then we don't even need this. Why are we doing this? That's so bizarre. So um, weird. Exactly. Okay. Um, mail carriers. So, you know, this does not include like... FedEx and UPS. I'm talking about the United States Postal Service. Like, you know, a lot of people don't really get a lot of mail unless it's like my little baby sending you a thank you card for something. Like people have like automated all their bills. Everything's done online. People don't get statements. I think every company has had a push to be more green and also saves them money to not have, you know, sending you invoices and stuff. So I think like, um, and junk mail, I think there's going to be a lot of um, automation there too. Um, Okay, fast food cook. I didn't realize this, but a lot of what happens in fast food restaurants can be automated. Like there's like machines that can do a lot of that for you. So, I mean, I don't even understand how that works, but it sounds pretty interesting. They said, um, you live out in LA now. They said there's a place called Cali Burger. Is that, is that near you? I have never heard of it. I just assumed it was in California. <laughs> You're like, now you sound like a parent. Like, yeah, yeah, that Cali burger. That's got to be, I'm like, I don't know. That could be like 200 miles away in another part of California. <laughs> California is literally the length of the entire United States of America. Uh, <laughs> you know what? First of all, you you just shit it on Washington and Oregon. <laughs> okay. That's how us Californians think. <laughs> and second of all, um, I totally just sounded like someone's mom. You know, Cali Burger. <laughs> it's got to be in Cali, right? Um, whatever. It's the season finale. It's fine. <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, but this establishment called Cali Burger is already testing automated like workforce. So they're using like an AI program that like where they have like machines that actually do like the the flipping the burgers and all that sort of stuff. So whatever. I'm going to now I'm going to have to go read up on it. (laughs) That's that's kind of like the opposite, too, of like an article I just read about how because of, you know, the pandemic, everyone was like, you know, fast food restaurants like increased their profits like so much because people were just in drive throughs and they also cut down their staffing a lot because they were just like trying to save money but they had these people working these crazy hours and in order to retain these teenagers I'm talking teenage kids who are in high school Mm -hmm. to retain them they are paying them $50,000 a year Mm. I'm talking about high imagine as a high schooler you are making $50,000 they're giving them manager titles paying them $50,000 a year and you know what I will just say it's the smartest thing ever because here's the thing Not everyone needs to be a lawyer. Not everyone (laughs) needs to be a, you know, pilot or teacher or whatever. Some people really want to work in fast food, Mm -hmm. but they don't make it seem that very easy. Mm -hmm. Like you Mm -hmm. have to work two or three jobs. Mm -hmm. Well, why can't you just have a really good managerial job at a restaurant you like Mm -hmm. and get paid for it? I mean, I love it. I hope it sticks around. We'll just see. But that's just what I read. That's crazy money. My first job out of college, I made $23,500 a year. I don't even know how I survived. (laughs) I really don't. When I had student loans and all that show, I was like, this is crazy. But we did. And I, I, we went on vacations and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Now, now it makes it sound like I was born in 1922. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't even deal. Um, all right. And um, so that's, that leads right into like, like being a cashier anywhere. I mean, you already are experiencing this. They've got it now where the self checkout is so many more lanes than like having somebody help you just to, at, at just about any store mm-hmm. they're really pushing i i you know i go to costco all the time and they just added self checkout which is crazy oh. cuz it's costco it's like you want me to what it's like it's heavy and big Everything and i gotta, weighs no oh, less than 20 pounds it is the worst but they're they're doing it i mean they made each little station pretty huge and there's never a line 
in that part because people are not like like people aren't migrating over there as quickly as I'm sure the Costco folks wanted them to like. But again, cashiers, no, not in, not in about ten, eight to 10 years. And then the number one job they say will be pretty eliminated is going to be travel agents because everybody does everything online. Nobody, you know, nobody really needs to like consult a travel agent anymore. So that's yeah, it's a wrap I on had- that. I had an employee for me who worked for me once who decided, you know, she wanted to start a new career and she was younger. She, you know, she was younger than I am. And she was like, wanted to start a, like a, be a cruise travel agent. And I was just like, (laughs) and I just looked at her like, (laughs) like you want to book people on cruise. Like this is a thing that you want to do in this moment when everything is, oh, you go to Google. Mm-mm. You literally, Mm-mm. it didn't make sense. So Mm-mm. yeah, I mean. And now, I mean, think about it, like cruises, just like those cruise ships that got docked be- when when COVID first hit and they were like, people were just trapped. There's a documentary on like either Netflix or Hulu about that one that, you know, do you remember it was like docked off the coast of like California? I didn't watch it. Well, I I can't watch it. I watched the trailer, but my um my claustrophobia would not allow me to watch that cuz it just looked crazy. Like, you know how small like a cruise ship cabin room is and they've got you like in there, just like in there and you can't leave. And this no. was like several weeks that they were docked that they wouldn't no. let them off. Like, it was uh-uh. So, I don't know who's getting on a cruise ship. And um Hasan Minhaj did a whole show about cruise ships. If you haven't seen it, you should watch um I think his show is also on Netflix and that shit is crazy. I'm definitely shitting all over the cruise industry right now. (laughs) Our cruise ship sponsors are not very happy right now. (laughs) Yeah. Carnival's like, we're not working with those girls. Um, All right. So those are the jobs that are not going to survive. So then I started looking up like all the hottest jobs that pay like the lowest paying job is $150,000. So $150,000 or more per year. And LOL, because you always are a foil for me. You always just set me up because I don't even need to go through the whole list because it's 20 jobs. And I'm not going to tell you all of the ones that are duh, like doctors and lawyers. Because like, I'm not pivoting to anesthesiologist yeah (laughs) this list is so stupid like nobody's doing half of these jobs without an um, amount of schooling that is just no Uh -uh. i barely passed high school chemistry and physics like (laughs) barely like yeah no so i'm gonna skip over all of those and mind you that the majority of the list are things within the medical profession that require a tremendous amount of schooling. But there were a couple others that, you know, I was like, okay. And some of them don't require like a college degree in that thing. You can just like learn or get certifications. Um, All right. So the first was like a marketing manager, which was which, you know, marketing manager is a, a pretty cool job. Most people do have a bachelor's degree um, in marketing or communications, but it's not like something where you have to like have like a very specialized degree in. Um, and all of these companies are always looking for, you know, smart people to come in and help them with their marketing efforts, coordinating stuff, coordinating events, campaigns, branding, all that sort of stuff. So um, top 25% of marketing managers make over $171,000 a year. So that's like a really great job. And US News and World Report ranked it the number one best uh, job for anyone interested in sales or marketing. And Makes the, sense. And, and you can grow really quickly is the other thing. You can, it, it's one of those like show and prove kind of jobs. Like you can, if you're good, they'll move you up. It just feels like, yeah, at this stage, like all we're trying to do is sell you something you mm-hmm. don't need. So we exactly. need a lot of people Who to market to, that. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like 1000%. Um, okay. Another one that I really liked was, hold on, let me get past all of the... Um, This one I thought was great because you have expertise in this was architectural 
uh, manager. So, I mean, you know what this is because you've worked um, with architects for many years in your other life. But it's, you know, someone whose job it is to plan and coordinate activities, do some of the research and development that's like behind some of these big architectural jobs that come in um, to an agency or if you're working with, you know, a couple partners or whoever. Top earners in this field, 25% top earners in this field can make average about $162,000 a year, which is great. Um, there's a lot of competition, um, but again, people are thinking that there's going to be some growth in this industry over the next couple of years. Um, and you do need a bachelor's degree, but as an architectural manager, you don't necessarily have to have an architectural degree. I would consider that more, I mean, I think what they're trying to call it is a project manager, because I know that like project managers were always our hardest thing to find in design. And normally what would happen is we would take like a senior designer and make him what we would call like a dirty PM because they would act as like partially a designer and pro mm. partially project manager. But to find somebody who is not interested in design, but was purely just willing to like all of the coordination that has to happen in design, it's like between mm -hmm. all of the consul sub consultants and the client and like scheduling and, and programming. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're willing to do that, it, it's, it's a, it's a hard job, but if you're super organized, uh, companies will definitely pay big money for that because like, mm -hmm. you know, plenty of people want to be creative. Not so many people want to be on the Excel right. or the, the totally. Microsoft project. Yeah. And honestly, that's such a big deal. Like when I worked in advertising, you know, all of the PMs were the, they were the, the lifeblood of every job. Cause you're, you're promising your client that you're going to get this done within a certain amount of time. And their job is to make sure that you stay on time and on budget and all of those things. It's really a great job for someone who's super organized. And as you can tell, the industry is willing to pay top dollar for those people, but you just got to be really fucking good. And um, yeah, that's, yeah. So again, not just architecture and design. Now that I think about it, project management, if you're good at it, can be across a bunch of different industries. Okay, so there were two different jobs that had to do with money. So a personal financial advisor or a financial manager. Again, you know, good if you have like a, a degree, <laughs> um, but there's plenty of people who are personal financial advisors that have a bunch of coursework or um, some type of different certifications. Um, um, you don't have to have a financial, um, like an accounting degree, but it's like very helpful if you do. Um, and you don't just have to work like for a bank. You can work for like an insurance company, an investment company, all kinds of different sorts of um, estate planning, um, helping folks who are trying to work on like what their retirement packages are going to look like. There's lots of different ways that you can help advise people um, in terms of their finances. So that's, I think a lot of folks are thinking more about their money and like, and, and probably getting scared that it's going to be around when they need it when they're older. So, um, you know, if you're savvy in those areas, those are some good jobs. And then the last one, which was kind of like my favorite, <laughs> was an air traffic controller. I was like, oh, that's a really interesting job that I never really thought of is going to be like a hot job. <laughs> um, but the cool thing about it is you don't necessarily need a degree like in any sort of like aviation what you have to do is take a course with the federal aviation administration academy the faa you do have to pass a bunch of like background checks and medical checks um but that's really it i mean it's like it's really like a trade that you learn um, and, you know, they have a union and it's a pretty good job and they make about $150,000 a year. Well, I would expect so. <clears throat> so high stress. I mean, can you imagine working at like a super high stress airport? Like I'm sure Atlanta, I'm sure Dulles, I'm sure <laughs> JFK, I'm sure even LA. Just, uh, yeah, managing all of that seems super stressful. And I know they probably do need more air traffic controllers because I felt like one of the narratives was like mm -hmm. they weren't getting a lot of sleep. Like there just wasn't enough, like, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the sort of 
schedules was crazy which of course as a very nervous flyer as i tend to be (laughs) i never really liked that but my cousin i don't think you know this my cousin is an air traffic controller but he he is an air traffic controller for the army so i i don't know i never get by the way he's like the chillest guy ever i never get the impression that he's in a high stress job um and also being an air traffic controller in the military is like you get to go to like some more interesting places. So he's been stationed in like San Diego, Hawaii. He lives in like Key West now. I'm like, you know, he's not getting all those like bum military bases that are like out in the middle of nowhere. Like, I don't know, he kind of has like a cool, I don't know, military job, but yeah, you're right. If you're working like at commercial air airlines, that's probably a little bit of stress. Maybe $150,000 is not enough, but um, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but well, anyway, should be starting, yeah. <laughs> so that's it. That's it for the hustle this uh, this week, and we will be right back with the cool down. Kiki, we've come to the end of the show, my favorite part of the show, where you tell us an interesting story or share with us, I don't know, something you're thinking about. What you got? Yeah, normally, you know, normally it's like I find a story or something that's cool to share. Um, Today, I actually wanted to share, still, still share something, but it's actually a movie. And it came to mind because, you know, the day we're recording this was the day, is the day that Britney Spears, for the first time in her 13 year conservatorship, got to speak. Right. If you wow. got, if you didn't get a chance to see the New York Times doc um, on Britney, obviously, Watch that immediately um, because I think there was, you know, Free Britney had been going around for a while. And I think people like, you know, you and I, Vanessa, mm-hmm. just we knew it existed, but we didn't take it seriously. And then we mm-hmm. watched that doc and then it was like, whoa, whoa. why have we been ignoring this? Mm-hmm. And, you know, conservatorship, now people are really interested. And there's also, you know, I watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and there is a couple on there, uh, Erica Jane and Tom Girardi. And basically the story, if you watch The Housewife and the Hustler, which is on Hulu, mm. um, you basically Tom Girardi is being accused of stealing millions and millions of dollars from victims, you know, of personal injury lawsuits. Um, and we're talking big ones, settlements. He's, you know, he's the he's a lawyer that was the Aaron Brockovich lawyer. Yeah. And that was how he was his claim mm-hmm. to fame. So he got really into being hired, or he was hired for these huge settlements. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we're talking about airplane crashes, all of that. Anyway, so he's being accused of stealing uh, clients' money. And so he has recently... Uh, been deemed to have dementia or Alzheimer's, um, which, you know, some people don't necessarily believe. They think it's pretty convenient that this happened as all of these charges are coming Mm. up. So now he's in a conservatorship with his brother, right? Um, And it's been interesting to see that play out because, you know, he's in this conservatorship, but then, you know, if you follow me uh, on IG at the Talk of Shame, you'll know that there were some spies lurking in Pasadena who thought they Mm. saw him at a restaurant, you know, and it just seems like his conservatorship you know, as a guy, and it seems a little loose if he's mm-hmm. out and about, allegedly. Mm-hmm. But Brittany, you know, we haven't heard from, like, from her, it seems, in 13 years. Mm-hmm. And so we got to hear her. Um, and so I think that it's going to be a long time that we... I, th- I think it's time that we start examining these conservatorships because one of the things that Brittany said when she finally got to speak to the judge was there's thousands and thousands of people who've been abused. You know, she's mm-hmm. like, I feel like a sex trafficking victim, the way I'm being used. And so the people who don't have her money and she had all this money and power and it was still happening to her and people who don't have money, like what's happening there. So there's this movie on, you can see it on Netflix called I care a lot. Okay. Have you seen this Vanessa? I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Okay. It's amazing. It uh, stars Rosamond Pike, who I think was good girl. Oh good, yeah. Yeah. Gone girl. Or gone girl. Sorry. Gone mm-hmm. girl. Rosamond Pike and um, Diane Weist, who we mm, love. I love her. Um, And it's basically black comedy, which, you know, black comedy is my Mm -hmm. favorite genre. Mm -hmm. Um, And she essentially is this woman who 
gets guardian over elderly people. Oh. And she has developed this relationship with these, you know, I guess probate courts or with the courts where she goes into these facilities um, and she's able to get this guardianship. But mm. essentially you'll see, I'm not giving anything away. You know, you see that she basically finds a mark and this person could be completely living like a normal life, but she's able to create a narrative around them mm. that all of a sudden they're not able to take care of themselves. She has to become guardian. So then she's in control of all of their finances. Oh, and, you shit. know, she starts, you know, selling their houses, taking, you know, and it's all of that. So she really looks for. So anyways, um, I care a lot, I think is a amazing movie. And while it's like, obviously like a black comedy thriller and, you know, it takes a, you know, a different turn. Mm -hmm. I think it's just an interesting look into, I think that this actually happens and that oh, we're not yeah. looking into it. Oh, yeah. Um, so. <clears throat> well, I, I watched, are... I watched both of the documentaries that you mentioned. I watched the, and uh, the New York Times one about Britney, the free Britney one. And I did watch the Hustler and the Housewife, Housewife and the Hustler, one. Yeah. And yeah, they, they're both crazy. Um, but the, but the Britney one, which I feel like we watched like over the holidays just sometime during COVID, which is all one, 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 one week. I mean, it all blends together, but the, the thing that stuck out to me the most, the one line was when they asked her lawyer, if anyone had ever tried to get their conservatorship removed and been successful. And she was like, no. So once you get into a conservatorship, it appears that it's, it is not damn near, it is actually impossible to get out of one. And most of them are reserved for elderly people who might be suffering from dementia, which is like, that makes sense. Brittany is a young woman who has her whole life still ahead of her. She's 39 years old. And this has been in effect for I for how many years? 12, 13, 13 years. So, I mean, she was in her twenties when this started. This is just, it's total bullshit. And it, and it does shine a light. And I like when, I mean, I like when there's like a fictional movie that's like kind of happening alongside of like real stuff that's happening in the, in the real news. So now I'm going to go watch that. Cause it'll probably help inform what's happening with like Brittany, which is a story I am following. Cause I am so, like I just feel so sad for her, and I and I don't want these people to get away with um with what they're doing. All right, well, good. Uh, movie recommend. I like it. It's a movie rec. It's a movie, movie rec. rec this time. Um, Love the movie for the for the. Well, thank you for joining us on our season finale. <laughs> our um, season finale, not finale. Yeah, we will be back. <laughs> we'll be back like next week <laughs> with episode nine. <laughs> Oh, we'll be back. I don't even know if we're going to take a break. Maybe we'll take a week. Should we take a week? I don't know. We'll let you know. You just we'll let you know, yeah. Subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed so you'll get the little alert. And follow us on our IG. I'm at Vanessa Kontav. And Kiki is at the Talk of Shame. And yeah, so we'll be back with episode nine. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Moms vs. Aunts is brought to you by Cafe Mom. Our theme music is composed by Coney Island Music. We want to hear from you. To give us your comments, leave us a voicemail at 929-265-0277. And we might include them in the show. You can also reach us by email at momsvaunts at gmail.com. Remember to rate, review, and follow Moms vs. Aunts wherever you get your podcasts. And for more parenting stories, real talk, and entertainment news, go to cafemom.com. <laughs>